chicken brooder is an essential piece of equipment for you if you intend to hatch and raise chickens. A brooder refers to some type of heated enclosure for raising chicks, whether turkey pods, gooselings, or chicken. A brooder must have a heat lamp, a source of food and water for the chicks, and wood shavings as bedding. Subiri takes us through his brooder and what activities should take place in the room. So this is the this is our brooder. As I did mention, the walls must be well ventilated because we want to keep the chicken warm. And also we have separate coats for the inside here. So once the worker gets inside, they leave the other coats outside for infection prevention. Uh, here we have the sensors for the temperature. So instead of just guessing, you can see sensor one is, zone one is 30 degrees, zone two is 32, zone three 31, then zone four is here, is 27. It's a bit low because of opening the door. So we're able to know what temperature is in the whole uh, brooding system. So this is the gas brooding system. So if it's too cold, we just increase the gas here. And then the, warm gets, the, the room gets warmer. Uh, also, this is the liquid paraffin. This is the liquid paraffin, the one we normally put on water to open the digestive system. This is the multivitamins. I normally also put mix in the in the water. Yes, and then of course chick mash, that's basically what you give them. Uh, the heat is day and night. They require to be to be kept warm. So as you can see, when you see them moving freely, you know the temperature is okay. If it was very cold, you'd have seen them crumbling together in one corner to feel warm. Uh, of course, below the gas you can see there's no there, there are very few chicks there. That's because the temperature is a bit high, it's about 32. Uh, so this week we're aiming at 30, 30 degrees, because this is their second, uh, second week. Uh, of course, clean water is very important and feeds. So for example, if you're doing a thousand chicks and above, you're better off using a gas brooding system. Basically what you require is to buy a burner and a gas cylinder. It's about, this is a 50 kg gas cylinder. This takes about uh, a week, and then you replace it with another gas cylinder. But normally we use about two gas cylinders, 50 kgs for four weeks. Uh, so two gas cylinders is about 10,000. The gas brooder is about 20,000, the brooder itself. The rest is just the room. Of course, you have to add the sensors, these ones, for the temperature. And of course, there are issues are the normal feeders and the drinkers, but basically, a brooding system gas should cost you about 40,000 40, shillings to set up. Yes, but you can also use a jiko, like those jikos you see there. Don't use gas, you can use just normal jikos. A jiko is about 1,600 shillings, and then just use charcoal. So you don't necessarily need to make it very expensive. You can also use this bulb, electric bulb. Uh, if, you are use, if you have few cuckoos, one bulb is enough for about 100 chicks. And this bulb is about 300, it's about 600 shillings. So you can make it cheaper depending on uh, your number. But as you scale up, uh, you need to have more investments. Inside a brooder, a farmer must ensure the feeders and drinkers are placed in a straight line to ensure the chicks are safe. It is also important to maintain uniform heat source spread across the brooder to avoid overcrowding. So basically here we have the drinkers where we put the water. So the liquid paraffin we normally put it here on top. It's basically an oil so it just floats on top. Here we have the feeders with the, the chick wash. This is the, the gas burner, which is our main source of heat for the room. Here we have a sensor. There are four sensors here. There is one there, there is one there, there is one there, and then there's one at the very back. So we can tell the temperature in the room. So for example, 
the temperature is low in this corner, you can add a jiko or put on this bulb. This is an electric bulb. So these are for supplementing the heat from the gas brooder. We normally use this, you'll find that when you're brooding, there are some chicks that will be a bit weak uh, because the strong ones are pushing them away from the feeders. So we normally put them inside this so they can have enough food without being pushed aside. Uh, these are normal charcoal brooder, jikos. We just use them to increase temperatures in the various corners in case the temperature is not well distributed. Um, yes, of course, this is the installation on the wall because we don't want to lose a lot of heat in the room. So we use either blankets or this. If you don't put insulation, you'll find that you're using a lot of gas or charcoal or a lot of electricity. Brooding is actually day and night. For four weeks, every one hour, it's important to come and check, particularly because of the temperature. You might find the temperature is going too high or too low. So this is day and night for four weeks. So that's why brooding becomes, it's a lot of work, brooding a chicken. After one month, they're able to stay in a normal temperature. So one month after that, they're going to start the normal room. We normally use wood shavings, which we have to also change regularly. If you don't change it, it becomes, yeah, you get a lot of ammonia in the room. So you must change the wood shavings like, uh, re 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 regularly. At his feet formulation section, we meet his farm manager, Amen Mapema, who expands on the best feeds for different chick stages. Kasi pali tumesimama tunafanya hapa tunatengenezea chakula yetu ya kuku. Tuko na aina tatu za chakula ya kuku. Aina ya kwanza ni chick mash. Chick mash kuku yote kwa mkulima ambaye imezaliwa kuanzia day 1. Ukiangalia dunia zetu, tumeandika pale day 1. Kuku yote tangu izaliwe from day 1 mpaka week 8 ama miezi mbili inapea chakula inaitwa chick mash. Nataka mkulima ni elevi zuri kwa sababu kulima wengi huwa wanapea chakula kuku tu bora wanapea chakula kwa kuku. Kuna fao kuna fahamu. Kiangalia kwa hiyo mfuko wetu tumeandika day 1 all to 8 weeks old. Inapea chakula inaitwa chick mash. Kwa chick mash tuna viwango tofauti tofauti. Tunatumia mkulima au kulima wako tofauti. Kuna ile kuna kuku mbili tunapea kilo moja bila anataka kilo moja, kilo tano, kilo kumi zimeweka kwa gunia ambazo zimekesha chapia kampuni yetu. Kuna kilo kumi, kilo 20 na kilo 50. Ile unavyoziona pale. Pili tuko na ile inaitwa grass mash. Kuku tunaambia mkulima aelewe kuku yake kwa miaka ngapi au miezi ngapi na tutashana kiwango gani. Ikiwa wiki 9 mpaka wiki ya 18 inapea chakula inaitwa grass mash. Hapo kuku tunasema ziko barubaru kwa jana tunasema adolescence. Sio faranga na zianza kutaga lakini ziko katikati. Zinakula chakula inaitwa grass mash. Grass mash ni kuku imeanza wiki ya 9 mpaka wiki ya 18. Zinakulisha chakula inaitwa grass mash. Kiangalizo chakula madini ambayo tunaweka, yote ni sawa, madini ina kuminatano. Lakini kwa hiyo madini, kiongo ambayo tunaweka kwa chakula ya chick mash, ni tofauti na vile tunaweka kwa chakula ya grass mash. Na pia ni tofauti vile tunaweka kwa layers mash. So hii ni grass mash, zile kuku barubaru. Zilishe hizi kukuza kutakua mzuri, kutajia kupata mayai au nyama. Layers mash, nile kuku wakati mefika wiki ya kuminatisi, mebale. Ikibale, inamanisha nitaka kwanza kutaga ama nijoki kwa tayari kwanza kuchapa kazi ipe hiyo chakula inaitwa layers mash. Wakulima wengi wanachanganyikiwa wanasema layers mash ni chakula tu ya uh, kike. Hapana, pia jogoo inakula layers mash. Ikikula hivyo zote mbili zitafanya kazi nzuri, utapata mayai nzuri kuliko mayai yenyewe kama mayai kula hapa Kenya. Hapa kwenye store yetu pia wakulima wengine wako na zile kuzo zinaitwa broilers. Tutaanza pia chakula ya broilers, tata na broilers finisha on a special order. Iwapo unataka hiyo chakula, piga simu, namba utakupea baadaye utapata hiyo chakula tutakutengenezea na kupea chakula kuku zako zitapata chakula nzuri Working with his children in this farm Subiri advises farmers to dive into Kenyeji farming by starting with a number one can handle I think now when you talk about now running poultry as a business there are several things we are talking about here one we are saying that you have the experience to do around a modern poultry enterprise. 
we're assuming that you have access to market. We're assuming you have the numbers. So the challenges then would be one finance, you require finance. So for example, if I say, I want to do 5,000 chicken or 10,000 chicken. In most cases, you need to go to a financial institution to get you some money. You need big poultry housing or units. You need maybe even transport and other things. You need feeds, a lot of feeds. So I think finance is one of the key challenges. I think the second challenge is marketing. You may need to even hire a full-time marketing person. Because the good thing with numbers, if you have numbers, it's easy to market than if you don't have the big numbers. So we need to look at finance, marketing, and of course, what I mentioned before, the cost of fees. Because that's what is going to uh, eat into your business. For Kenyaji farmers to succeed, they must plan on their capital investment to sustain the business. We hope you've gained valuable insights on how to rear Kenyaji chicken. Do not get lost in this venture. Explore opportunities and make the best out of every situation. Thank you for staying tuned and continue watching KTN Farmers TV for more agricultural insights.